It's Mini Prime Time with your host, Will Friedel. Our special guest tonight, Bab Star. Tonight's episode of Mini Prime Time is brought to you by Willing Glam's Lone Star Bidets. Blast the shit out of your ass with the rage of a true Texan. And now, let's get to brushing. <laughs> Ah, how's everybody doing? Woo! Ah. Hey, Will. Will, hmm. we're live? Right. Hello, Mini Maniacs. Other camera, Will. Right. I am your host, Will Friedel. Hello, my mini maniacs. I'm your host, Will Friedel, and do we have a special show for you tonight? We have none other than Babs Tar here with us. Hi. Hello. How are you? Good. How are you? It's very nice to meet you. I've heard so much about you. We have so many questions. The fans have been throwing them in. Shoot. It's right off the bat. Yes. What's happening this season on Blind Spot? <sighs> you can give it to us. The audience is great. They've I'm, been waiting. What's been happening? It gets uh, intense. You heard it here. It gets intense. What's it like to be married to Laura Bailey? Fabulous. Everyone loves Laura. Hornets or bees? Bees? Clowns. Yeah, for sure. You're on that side. Interesting. You play the giant gray fighter lady on Critical Role. What's that like? I'm not Ashley R. Yasha? Huh. Yasha, truly one of the greatest characters in The Mighty Nine. I'm confused. Me too. Let's paint. <laughs> okay. Our lesson today is to work with a limited palette to give your character the illusion of dimension and to create a believable color family within that palette. Our resident painting master, Ian Phillips, has already applied a white base primer and has painted all the skin and hair. Now, if you want to see everything Ian used for Yasha, visit critroll.com. So for today's lesson, we're going to be using three grays, a light, a medium, and a dark, as well as a black wash to make everything just nice and washy, okay? Are you ready there, Bim Bam? Let's do it. So, Ian got us to where we are here. Yes. You see, we got, he's left us a very important part, which is the cape. Yes. Now, we are going to be doing a cool technique on this cape. So, you, are, you're familiar with dry brushing? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. So, for everybody out there not familiar with dry brushing, essentially, you put the paint on your brush, you wash away 80 to 90% of it, so there's just a bit, and then you paint against the grain. It's a very fine kind of way of covering a large space uh, at a single time, which yeah. is kind of cool. But what we're going to do to kind of accentuate this technique is that we are going to use multiple dry brushes over one another with different colors. Put on a dark base, then we're gonna go to a medium base, and then we're gonna go to a light base, which is, should make it pop, but all with dry brushing. We're gonna start with the dark here. Okay. So what kind of what kind of paint is this? Is this like acrylic? These are not acrylic. These are the paints they give me. Okay. <laughs> is what's going on. So we're gonna put a bit here in our pal. Oh, we need the poker. Oh yeah, here you go. We need the poker because sometimes the paints uh, actually get a little stuck at the top of the tip. By the way, one thing you have to learn about mini painting right from the start is there's gonna be a, an awful lot of double entendres, so please just go with them. So once you poke the tip, <laughs> you can then have it start working again. But the problem is um, if you shake and shake and shake and then it's clogged yeah. and you press as hard as you can, the entire top can pop off and cover us in paint. Oh, you weren't kidding about that. No, those, and uh, my dad would be pissed because this is his suit. This is our medium gray right here. We're gonna give a, a little bit of so that for each of us. This is interesting that you, we need all these different grays instead of just like watering down the black. We could easily have started with the darkest yeah. and then just kept almost white palette, like just whiting it out and whiting it out and whiting it out. Yeah. But this is certainly an easier way of going. Um, it also, frankly, I think looks better. And if you keep watering down your paint sometime, unless you're doing an entire wet palette, sometimes yeah. it can get a little droopy. Like if I was painting a painting, I would start kind of 
light like and a add. Base. A, sure. I would imagine you'd have like a medium color, and then you'd add like the grays and again the lights in the dark. Yeah, it's it interesting. depends on the technique you're using. So in a way, we're going to be doing both. We're going to be starting okay. with dark and then going to light, but then we're going to be reapplying dark because we're going to go back in with black and we're going to hit right. some of the crevices the folds, of the cakes and, and the folds and the shadows, right. and then we're going to hit it all with a wash, which is really going to make everything pop. So remember, we're going to take a little bit of paint, starting with the darkest. Okay. Don't need a whole lot, and then we're gonna get rid of most of it, and then go against the grain. Oh yeah. Do it up here. And we do. I need to stress about full coverage. It's, we should be having fun. You don't need to stress about anything. Yeah, this yeah, is the yeah. Joy. And I have these like gaps of white. Right now, that's okay. Because okay. again, everything's gonna add layers. Okay. And you want to make sure that your your brush is not wet. That's the other thing. So you want to make sure it's dry. Oh, I was gonna use the wet to take some of it off. I'm not used to this paint, so let's, let's see what happens. Hey, it's your mini. That's the joy. But we're gonna add a lighter gray, so I can always like fix that later. You can. Maybe. You absolutely can. Right now okay. we're just kind of dry brushing and hitting. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it right the the coat. Other side. Going against the grain just a little bit, and then get rid of most. See, so it's not really about coverage, it's about shading more right now. Contrast is always a good word. And then we go, any mini painter knows, you go from the contrast to the detail to the pop. Okay. And the pop is what you're looking for at the end where you give it a pop of color that's, or... That's the wash part maybe? Yeah, wash is more like, we always like to say the wash is the dude's rug where it really ties the whole room together. <laughs> that's the good thing. And the cool thing about this technique too is you're putting on so little amount of paint that you don't have to now walk away for 20 minutes while the paint dries. Yeah. It's like you're kind of ready to already move on to another round. Now, there's a couple interesting techniques here you can mm -hmm. use as well. We could dip okay. and then dry and then start with another color. Or if you've dry brushed enough of this off, but there's still just a bit of the dark still on your brush mm -hmm. and you go to the lighter, then you might actually get flecks of the dark in with the light and That's it actually great. looks kind of cool. Okay. So if, as long as it's not saturated and you're not actually mixing paint, you're just kind of, hey, if there's some black going into what your, your lighter color, uh -huh. it might add for a cool contrast of color actually. Okay. So we're gonna so jump. Same technique, like really Same light. exact technique. We're gonna go, and if you want to, you can do, I'm gonna do a little bit more because I wanna go on the top here. But if you want to, what we talked about is you then start the lighter up at the top and don't drag it as far down the mini. Mm. So the bottom of the mini remains darker than the top of the mini, even when you're adding stuff. And I've been rude. Do you want half of the sandwich that my mom gave me that was in um, my pocket? No, that's all, all you right. do. She made that for you. She did. I wouldn't dare want to take that away. She likes want to eat. <laughs> so we go, there we go. Um, the other thing you can do, which is kind of cool, is if you want to go back with the darker now, and you want to hit the bottom of the cape. Oh, I did, I've been doing that. You have, so you're jumping ahead of me, look at that. You're jumping way ahead of me. And it's like, uh, you don't need me at all. What's, no, I do. What's the point? That was fake, but that's sweet. <laughs> God, you get on a big NBC show, Elizabeth. and you're just the coolest person in the world. I get it. I get it. What's Brian Foster like to do? Oh my with? God, the worst. That's what I figured. <laughs> that is what I figured. So when you turn yeah. your brush sideways and you just drag it along the side, that's called edge highlighting, and you just get a quick. When you do that technique, do you use the tip, like the tip of the brush? Or you, you use the edge. You side? use the edge of the. So you use on the side of the brush, okay. um, but you go in. Turn it on the side and give it a quick swipe down the side and bam, see how it look on just on the side of the Yeah. There's just a You did a dark one now. I did. Okay. See? So you can go a little light and then a little dark. And then we'll go back in and we're gonna hit those with our dark um, detail brush a little bit. This is one technique where you really want to use the brush to, to your advantage. Okay, you really don't need a lot of paint. At all. At barely any. No, you really don't. Man, I love like this like this technique. It kind of when you add the white, the lighter, it, look, it like kind of creates the shadow with the paint. So yeah, there you go. That's exact. That's perfect. Like yours is much lighter at the top than yeah. mine is, but it's still they both look really cool. Yours looks more realistic. I feel like I kind of have a more cartoony one, which is but that's okay. Again, there's nothing more kind of my art exactly. style. Exactly. I'm falling on my chairs here. There we go. 
And you're supposed to follow your art heart, I've been told. It's a good, it's a good saying. It's a good saying. Do you go to a doctor and they're like, <laughs> sorry, you've got art heart. Like, what? No. It's good to have. So there we go. And now what we're gonna do is we are gonna move on to the next little step, which is just very lightly detailing some stuff. Okay. See some of the kind of the nooks and crannies that are that are actually in the cape? Yes. You can hit little parts of that with just like the tiniest little little speck of paint. I mean to the point where you're gonna find that when you take some of these smaller brushes, you will put paint on your brush and then go to do something and the paint is already dry on your brush okay. because you put so little on such a small little paintbrush. So it's, you move, you gotta move a little quickly. Okay. And there's times where I literally you will kind of decide it. what I wanna do before I do it. And I'll do it without paint on and I'll go, oh, I know I wanna hit that. I saw you doing that, that earlier. It was like you were practicing. You do, yeah, practicing. you got, it's kind of, it's the, the zen of it all. So you gotta decide what you're, and again, keep in mind, if you put something on and you hate it, we could we dry brush right over it and it's done. You start you start over. This is where the, the nitty gritty gets involved, which is kind of fun. So you, do you do this at home for fun? I do. I do. I um, anybody who knows me knows that I deal with anxiety, and nothing relaxes you like mini painting. Dude, it's just the greatest thing. Just making stuff ever. is like so good for the soul. It's very very zen. Even when you screw up, you kind of go, eh, I'll get you know I'll fix it tomorrow. Yeah. So this is a fun medium where I've found something I can do that I enjoy that anybody can do. If you're out there going, I have no talent whatsoever, well, I don't either. But this is a really cool and fun way to do it. And so I went in and I went a little more extreme and I did the bottom of the cloak black, black. Oh, I like that. I'm okay. going to copy you. You're going to copy? I might copy it. Too late. I already saw it. Ugh. It's going to happen. <laughs> SATs all over again. I'm kidding, I never took that. <laughs> I didn't think so. <laughs> it looks so good. <laughs> that was awesomely fake. <laughs> this looks so good. Wow, I gotta be honest, I am getting ready to wash. Yes. How close are you? I'm, I'm getting I there. I could be there. Yeah? I feel like you could totally fuss with this like forever. forever. You can just keep going and keep going and keep going. Can I look at your work? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. So you did a much more blended kind of coat, which yeah. is very cool, but that's great. I'm just playing it safe because I'm kind of. But that's great. Now yeah. watch when we hit it with the, see I went a little more toned. Yeah, yours is like more solid. Like I feel like the trend. It's. The gradient's more even. But now we're going to do something very cool and we're going to show a big difference between the two. So now, now comes washes. Okay which is just awesome. So what we're gonna do for washes though, is to show how different they can be. We've used all the same colors mm -hmm. going in, but now we're gonna use two different color washes so you can see the difference that's going on. Yes. I'm gonna give you um, what's the equivalent of black okay. to go over uh, uh, your cape. I'm gonna go purple and we're gonna see, unless you really are a fan of purple, but we're just gonna show the difference between what goes on. Now, so for, like in oil painting, mm -hmm. um, you really shouldn't use black right on the tube. So I, it, you make you can make a pretty dark purple that acts like a richer black. So like that makes sense that one of the washes is like a more purple. Yeah, see it. there you go. I don't know what you're saying about oil paintings <laughs> and stuff like that, because again, nothing. Yeah, but, sure. But um, this is, we, we use the bigger rounder brush okay. because you want to cover more area. And again, what you're gonna do is, you're really gonna wet your brush. It shouldn't be dripping everywhere, but you really want it nice and wet. Sure. And you are literally just gonna brush over the entire thing you just did. If it pools in certain places, that's fine. If it's gonna get caught in some of the little nooks and crannies, that's, good. that's, that's a good thing want. because that's what's, you know, again, you don't wanna saturate it on to where when you t turn the mini back up, it's mm. dripping off the bottom, so should but I you definitely wanna cover it. Have painted it lighter since we're gonna do this darker wash no. maybe? No, 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 wait till you see what happens with the thing. It's gonna be totally cool. Okay. And I'm gonna show you the difference between when I do mine purple and it's gonna be a different shade than when you do yours. I'll watch you first. You're gonna watch again. me first. All right, so you go in and you get, again, a good amount okay. on there. And then you wash it over. Cool. And you let gravity do the work. Do some of the work. Okay. Bring it all the way down. Oh, shit. <laughs> That is the normal reaction. Oh shit. The first time somebody uses a wash. 
and you do this, and then you come in and whisk, and you do this, and you come in and whisk. Cool, cool. When it dries, look what the purple did. Ooh, I love it. Look at the difference of what the black did. The black really made mm. the grays pop and everything, where the purple kind of brought out the real dark crevices. Yeah. Um, and when it dries more, which it will, it's still wet, obviously, you're gonna be able to see, it's gonna hit kind of the different cracks where that's gonna be dark, whereas that's gonna be dark, but this is gonna be lighter, this is gonna be lighter, all this around's gonna be lighter. Yeah. It really adds a sheen to everything. It's so cool. And then eat? Yeah. Well, I thank you so much for coming, Bingle. It was yeah. great to have you here. Um, <laughs> I, I'm glad we learned some stuff. And then thanks for that awesome blind spot tip. Yeah. You know, so today we learned how to work with a limited palette to give your character the illusion of dimension and to create a believable color family within that palette by first using your colors and working your way out from there. Hmm. Now next week, great show. We're gonna have Dermot Mulrooney here to show us how to paint fades, Dr. McDreamy himself. So if you wanna paint Yasha or any of the Mighty Nine, our mini sets from Steamforge are available in the Crit Roll shop or wherever Steamforge minis are sold. Stay colorful, you maniacs. And don't ever forget, it's not the size of the mini, it's how you paint it that matters. Thanks, everybody. Are we done? Is it?